Hey there, it's Samir with Engadget. We're here at the Tesla test facility driving the Model S. That is correct, the Model S sedan from Tesla. And it is quite peppy, as you can see here, even in curves. So, so about 15. this is uh, the part where we were allowed to speed because it's a closed track. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> And then they're about to enter public roads here, so. All right. Turn the AC on. Yeah, please. So, so far, um, obviously, an amazing amount of torque and power. Uh, it keeps you on the back of your seat. Um, it, the car handles very, very flat and very predictable, and um, it's really quite impressive, actually, considering the car weighs about 4,700 pounds. Of course, now we have a minivan to deal with. Um, very, very comfortable and subtle. Um, this is a, a performance vehicle, correct? Correct. So it has 21-inch wheels, and it has um, air suspension, obviously. Correct. And what you'll notice as you go through these corners uh, is that it rolls very flatly. Um, yeah. the, the battery pack being at the bottom of the car means we have a very low center of gravity. Roll control is phenomenal. Um, it's literally one of the greatest cars I've driven in that regard. Yeah, I know it feels it feels very comfortable and calm and planted. These curves are all slightly off camera as well. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, acceleration and, and and you know top speed and all that is what people always focus on. But really, as you can hear, the cabin is super quiet. Um, and you know, like this is a pretty smooth road, but like it's there's absolutely. You know, there's no no harshness to suspension, despite the fact that it, it really handles quite amazing in corners like that. At one corner on the test track, I was taking at speeds that probably would make a lot of cars cringe, <laughs> and we didn't even hear their tires go off. Exactly. So. Hey, the the capabilities of this car are ridiculous for a carbon size, um, and the fact that they can isolate, you know, both. They can say, you know, we can have a car that handles very well, but also takes the bumps very well. It's very very few cars can do that. So I'm, you know, I'm doing the speed limit because we're on public roads again. Um, as far as the, uh, the the driver interface, you know, I, I had very little time to adjust the seat. It's, uh, it's very comfortable, but I could use a little bit more upper support right now, upper torso support. Sure. It's probably adjustable. I haven't really looked at that. Um, the instruments are, and the, the touchscreen is incredibly easy to read and, and uh, in bright light. It's really quite amazing here. I can actually set my temperature pretty easily. And a lot of the essential controls that you see on the touchscreen, like media volume, are replicated on these steering wheel controls. So, you know, that that makes it a little easier because one of the things we were concerned about when we uh, first heard about the touchscreen is like, how do you, how does it work with, you know, uh, feedback, basically? Mm -hmm. There's no, there's no, I mean, it's like a phone. There is a potentially, there, there could be tactile feedback. Um, Haptic, haptic feedback, feedback. But it hasn't been implemented, right? Not in this car, no. So, so there's really no feedback, and one of the things about if you're an enthusiast about driving a car is that you want to be able to um, have some kind of knob you can just reach out to. So they, they alleviate that somewhat by having a lot of the controls right here yeah. on the steering yeah. wheel. Um, and then, of course, they can reconfigure the touchscreen to do anything and be any user interface. And you know, we've all learned from the iPhone and you know. Uh, other smartphones today that having a slab of glass that basically can turn into whatever you know um, interface you want is, is kind of the way to go so this this car is big but it doesn't feel that big am I turning right here You're turning right right here exactly so. you, you make a very good point um, and again that comes down to the engineering we've, we've put in the car um, you know a lot of cars in this class are you know they're approaching I agree right there. you know they're approaching you know two tons, maybe a little over two tons. Um, but, you know, again, having that battery pack on the bottom, you know, you know, a lot of people kind of discredit electric cars because of the fact that they have this heavy battery pack. Right. But so this is bumpier here now. I'm gonna purposely drive on the ridges and bumps a little bit to get a feel for things. So, very compliant, but, you know, it's not harsh at all, but it is uh, still firm the way, I, personally the way I like it. Exactly. Um, that's, you know, a matter of preference, I presume. Again, you know, it's really no point speeding or pretty much an industrial <laughs> residential area. But um, and this is the performance car. I think that I mean that's that's a. I mean, if I push accelerator right now, <laughs> exactly, uh, we're gonna be moving. 
Uh, and the, oh, so another thing I want to touch on sure. is uh, the regen is really interesting. Mm. So you can see here when I when I, I'm moving forward or right here. Oh, you're going to be uh, turning right here. Yeah. Okay. And we're making another right turn to the next one. Cool. So if you look right now, if I leave my foot down on the uh, uh, speedometer, there's a green bar, and then if I accelerate, there's a yellow bar, and then the blue bar is my actual speed. So the the green means regen. The uh, the orange means that uh, I'm accelerating. And uh, the way it works is pretty intuitive, actually. There's a single gauge that shows you everything. Uh, but the, the cool thing is this is very much like they did with the Active E, BMW Active E. And it's that the regen only happens when you lift off of the accelerator, which is exactly the way it should be. Um, it, when you brake, it's just purely the calipers, the way you expect it. Um, it's not like any kind of like weird trickery like you see, say, on the Prius or the, or the Leaf or a lot of the what I call the Star Trek cars. Um, you know, I'm not interested in that. I'm a drive. I'm, I like driving. I really enjoy the experience. So here, I'm going to try taking this on ramp real fast. Let's see. It's probably could go a little faster. <laughs> Things are flying all over the place here. You uh, you will pull some juice. But yeah, <laughs> seriously, I can't go very fast because we're all on Interstate 880 now, and I have to worry about the wonderful people. California Highway Patrol. <laughs> but the, the great thing about this car too, driving in traffic, is the fact that, you know, again, you have this instant torque response from an electric motor. You know, you don't have to wait for the engine to get in the power vent. Yeah. But you combine that with regenerative braking, such that in traffic, it, it becomes a great traffic car. You're not... Uh, well, I think the other thing about that I was going to make the point about with this lift-off regen, which I think is the way it goes, it's like you're, for, basically it's like you're driving in first gear or like in second gear exactly. on a stick shift all the time. Exactly. As soon as you let off, your car slows down a little bit. You can kind of predict when the light's going to turn red mm -hmm. ahead of time, and you you can uh, you're going to show me too because I think it's down here in controls, yeah. right? Actually, we need to get two lanes over because we're going to get off the next exit. All right, no worries. Um, what I was going to say is there's a way to change the regen settings, right? Correct. Um, if you actually go to the driving screen. Uh, so we're in audio right now. Let's go to driving. You can see regenerative braking. We're in standard. Right so now. in standard. Now I'm going to try low just to see what it feels like. So I'm going to accelerate and let go. Yeah, it's it's more like an automatic car would be. I don't like it as much. So you see, think about this lever as stick shift automatic, really <laughs> exactly. for the for the way it feels holding you back. And you also notice you can adjust your steering modes too. So right now we're in sport, so it's a little heavier than what you'd have normally. Well, that's um, that's what I like. Don't touch it. <laughs> no, seriously. Like if I were to drive this car, I would never be in the other modes. Mm -hmm. Even when my grandma is in the car. Well, she's passed away, unfortunately. But what I'm saying is that I feel um, I feel that you know I shouldn't adjust to my passengers. Right. right. I mean, sorry. But anyway, um, yeah. No, this is um, this is a, this is really 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 remarkable. I mean, I've I was turning out here. Turning out right here. Exactly. You know, I I've it's you know I've driven a few electrics now, and I really think it's the future. I really think that's what I want to drive going forward. I, I'm I'm a big fan of stick shifts and driving manual cars and I think there's always going to be room for that in my life. That's a key point. Are we turning right here? Turning right here. That's a very key point. Um, personally, I'm going to, but I think the future is this and the way this is done with regen, look, I'm letting off the gas right now. I'm not braking and I'm like not even catching up with the truck <laughs> and I can turn left so people behind me are going, what? <laughs> of course, there's a cool feature since we're in Gadget and we're a bunch of tech geeks. Um, I'm going to turn I'm right. Love left. turn left. Um, one of the cool things to note is that um, when uh, there's a, an accelerometer obviously in the car and uh, what's going to happen is when you let off the, uh, the accelerator, if the G forces are strong enough, it will actually turn on your brake lights Correct. for you. Correct. So like on the BMW Active E, it does it systematically, it's mm -hmm. on a switch, which mm -hmm. I didn't like because one of the things I pride myself when I drive stick shift is that I can sometimes kind of coast right. and adjust my speed based on you know my input, but I don't want the brake lights to go off when I get off the accelerator. <laughs> exactly. Seeing there's just enough room to squeeze through now. Yep. Don't want to take any chances with a car I don't own. <laughs> um, so it's also I'm used to a much smaller car. So the other thing that's kind of interesting that I keep hitting this lever, which I think is a cruise control, correct? Correct. Yeah, the the turn signal is a little bit lower than what you're, you might be used to. Um, um, and then this is actually the, uh, well, quote unquote gear shifter, the basically the, the park drive neutral Correct. thing. Interesting. I'm not sure I like that placement, but um, everything else feels right. Um, I suppose the lights are on the turn, the turn signal stalk, mm -hmm. right? Okay. 
Um, you know, I'll have all your light controls here as well. Let's see what happens. <laughs> Taking off here. Now I'm back on the test track, correct? Yep. Go around this corner. And, and I can go create oh, other people. What are people doing? I guess they have chase cars for other publications. Oh, that's possible too, yeah. And they're going to have to let me go through because I'm going to go, go really fast. Do you mind if I had to do a brake test? Like, oh, yeah. Crazy, at, the, at, the end, at the end, you can do a brake test. Because right, awesome. I think these guys are kind so, of hauling it. So can, uh... And we're doing 70 miles an hour. I'm going to pass this guy. <laughs> That's Very a nice. good brake feel. Nice, Definitely. you can modulate it nicely. I wasn't kicking the ABS in yet. So, I'm ignoring the stop sign. Yeah, Forget no it. problem, we're on private roads, so. Um, yeah, no, this is, uh, this is really, really nice. <laughs> One thing you probably didn't notice, actually, is that the suspension actually goes to its low setting once you get over uh, about No, I didn't notice, but hour, yeah. uh, it's interesting because on the little slalom at lower speeds, I noticed right away that it, it's, it's a little more compliant, mm -hmm. so it does seem to adjust. Like, then, like right now, it's like the steering is actually really easy. Like, I mm -hmm. could... I could parallel Even in park sport this. Mode, yeah. yeah, yeah, no, this is mm -hmm. very interesting. So there's a lot of computer trickery <laughs> going on, but it's not intrusive, and that's I think the key that's point key. here. Mm -hmm. We we are a company of, of gearheads. Um, you know, we like to drive. See, I still know. think that this uh, chassis I had there. I want a single seat in the middle, and I want to drive <laughs> that. Can <laughs> you be, make that happen? That'll be our kit car. We'll see yes. what we can do. Yes, that would be fantastic. <laughs> No, this is uh, really quite fabulous. Thanks so much.